This first four picks in March Madness betting commandments edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. WinBet is now live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia. From boosted same game parlays to live in game odds, WinBet has what you need to win. Bet 100 and get 100 at winbet.com or download the WinBet app and start winning today. Safe restrictions apply. We're also brought to you by the DJ Dance. Our March Madness bankroll contest is back, free to enter. A thousand dollars in cash is pri- in cash and prizes up for grabs. Plus, we've got first half under bingo. Enter both contests on the SGPN app. Hey, what's up, you degenerate gamblers? This is Bill Burr, and you're listening to SGPN. Let it ride, baby. Everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan. Real money, Kramer. What's happening, Kramer? Dog. Yo, March Madness week. It's starting right now, and this is all serious business. All super serious. This is. Oh no, go ahead. No, what do you? Uh, you you, you had some. I was just say this is all super serious because it seems like uh, we we've, we've got. We've got a leaky ship floating around the gambling seas, Sean. Oh, okay. I in doing some, uh, you know, some preliminary prep work, uh, some refinement of the old chisel, uh, chiseling the stone of the commandments. I see out the. What do I see everywhere? Actually, I don't think there's one major gambling site where I don't see some mention or reference to the first half unders. I don't. Want, I don't want to blow the wad on the commandments, but it, it's become a thing, Sean. It's become a thing because oh. we made it a thing, right? Join us here to talk college basketball. Pick Dundee. What's happening, Colby? What's, <laughs> Let's what? go. My Nick Cage. Oh, uh, that 30, was I, I uh, used that earlier that? today. What was that? I, 60 seconds. Gone in 60 yeah. seconds when he's like, yeah. let's steal some cars. <laughs> I used that earlier today when uh and who knew that uh, Aaron Rodgers was going to turn into that that character <laughs> and he's about to do that to Woody Johnson of the New York Jets but <laughs> let's lose some games <laughs> yeah, let's, uh, let's lose some playoff games <laughs> let's ride. let's go that was actually Russ Russ Wilson did it no one really saw it as a Nicolas Cage move but that was a total like let's ride <laughs> all right Sean I mean but seriously it, I'm we, super serious we've got I mean the the metaphorical small business that uh, from from you know little old Main Street, one stop sign in the town, mm. to every goddamn publication touting first half unders, talking about for what, un- un- unbelievable, Sean. It's easy to see a tight turn, right? I, I, and just hold on to your britches because there's going to be one year where we flip the switch and we say, you no. know what, <laughs> all first half overs. We're I, not. It would take quite the. Quite yeah, at some point the bandwagon's gonna get so big the axles are gonna break. We're gonna have to you, caulk our wagon and float across the DGen rivers. We're not there yet. I just want I just want to make sure everyone on our DGen trail here are aware that you have to stay tuned because conditions can change in this uh, in yeah. this uh, ever ever uh, strong, while we search for gold. We strong have, current in the DGen River. Yeah, right? We have found uh, stone whiteout that we're able to <laughs> reconfigure the commandments with. But I mean, I would even argue we saw it last year. And I guess, sh- should we just, is there anything we need to get to up top, Sean? Well, I mean, I think it's worth mentioning oh, how we just first. dominated <laughs> the conference tournament section of the picks. Oh. And this is not even, I, I mean, Penn State was what, two points oh. away from cashing my 25 to 1? That's not even included in this list. Ryan, we tweeted it out. But again, Kramer, 63% overall, 68% on his locks. Me, 54%, 63% on my locks. Colby, 58%, 60%. On his locks, it was just uh, it was just a machine. And then, even on our uh, March tenth episode, I hit both locks. Kramer sixty percent. It, it's just been a uh, it's just been a nice little run here, building up to wow. March Madness. Bankroll building, Sean. As exactly. we as we told you, we were going to do. All right. So just just to put a number on that. Yeah. There are thirty two. Uh, someone argued with me already on Twitter. There's not 33 <laughs> conferences. Can like they just organize the independence as 33? Yeah. yeah. 
There are 32 conferences, AKA 32 automatic bids. This show predicted 21 of them. Mm. Oh my uh, God. I, I mean, grand Canyon. I know I hit that one. We had, we had our SEMO pick. Colby. I mean, uh, we hit a couple of the long shot ones too. I mean, honestly, I feel like the only ones conferences we missed were when it was, when it was super chalky. Yeah. Like we went this, we, we hit at plus four fifty. We would have hit Gonzaga, but we didn't, there's no value in picking. Yeah. Come yeah. on. It's not fun. And we all, we all hit Howard at plus three thirty. and who can forget the sweat that the Kramer three, had fa- uh, fairly Dickerson at a uh, plus two thirty. the 300 to one. Three fifty to one system provided a lot of sweats with Cal Poly, Texas oh, State, uh, Marist at a hundred to one made a final against Iona. I was I was sitting on one of those. Didn't even need to hedge it, Sean. No, and we didn't even give out a million. Like a, at most, it was like two, maybe three picks. But the like the third pick would be like some three fifty to one that you would put like you know ten bucks on. Yeah. Well, uh, if you want, if you're interested, uh, the the research team with their abacus can figure out the uh, the, the <laughs> unit measurement. And, and also, guys, centimeters or inches. Please. What's that? What's that? Uh-oh. Yes, we we have Moneyline Mac on the ground. SGP and crew is. Is in Vegas already. already. Wow. Yeah, boots in the ground. Yeah. They call that a what do they call that? Is, is it a scout crew? Like a, a, the 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 look ahead scout crew. The canary there. in the yeah. coal mine, yeah. making sure there's no toxic T- taking, gases. Yeah, samples of the sand in the desert there. <laughs> no, I mean we're you know a lot of live shows for all of us. So hopefully he's getting acclimated to that dry air in the desert. Although it's a little wetter than normal right now. I mean same in Los Angeles. But uh, to finish the tout, uh, we all. I mean not. I know you you were team touting earlier, Sean, yes. but I, we did stomp on the Discord too to close out. Oh, the it season. was great! Just I, put them in a put them in a locker. Let's, let's think about this. If you just took our picks when we all three agree, we were hitting at seventy percent in conference tournament land. Well, you know, fifty five percent on the season. So I uh, you know. Let's go. Hey, but, uh, which by the way, I I don't know. I watched a lot of the CBS coverage um, with the sound. Hey, Larry, they were doing a lot of making fun of the uh, Italian American gentleman up there. Every time he would say like, "Forget about it," the whole fucking room would laugh. I mean, well, have we come to a time where it's okay to make fun of Italian American people openly? Oh yeah, definitely. You, that's not a can. My dad right? has no issues making fun of Italian people. Oh wow, <laughs> not at all. Oh, Jesus, they, they, we were talking about this like ninety-year-old Italian grandmother, and oh. he's like, "She's living too long. Can't trust her. Can't trust any Italians." Oh, I'm like yeah. she's ninety-two. <laughs> Hey, we're live on YouTube, youtube.com slash sports game and podcast. Make sure you smash that subscribe button and let's get to it. We got a, we got a great episode. We're going to be doing our 10 commandments for betting on March madness. And then our first four picks, obviously we're going to be picking every N- uh, college basketball game against the spread. I almost said NFL. Cause yeah, this is almost March madness feels like NFL week one. So much action, so much anticipation. Download the WinBet app, where you can, of course, bet big, win even bigger. Bet 100, get 100. Save restrictions apply. Fire up that parlay wheel. Oh man, you know we're going to be over at the WinBet counter, just unloading tickets one after the next. And of course, if you hit the uh, biggest long shot parlay of the week, you get a thousand dollar free credit. So many ways to win over at WinBet. Offer subject to change terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in the state. Replay through WinBet is available. If you were somebody who doesn't get problem, call 1 800 522 4700. And hey, uh, the March Madness DJ Dance is back. $1,000 in cash and prizes up for grabs. Download the app and first half under bingo. That's right, you get a bingo board with all the, uh, the round one uh, matchups. Get five first half unders in a row. Win a forty dollar SGPN gift card. Let's go. Leave it. Leave it. Oh, oh we got that? to the we got to the sweet extended <laughs> solo part. I mean, all time. But Let, let's make sure the social team shares those this live performance just so everyone can get ready for. I know Fox has it now. Who gives a shit? Just make it. Just sounds like I, I know it actually kind of sounds like NBA to me from my childhood. But that doesn't matter. Fox is doing a good job of reprogramming. All right. So let's get to it. We'll hit up uh, March Madness Ten Commandments. Then our first four picks. Obviously, the first commandment is thou shalt bet all thirty-six mm-hmm. first half unders. And again, thirty-six because the first four games do qualify in our model. 
Kramer highlight highlight uh, some of the numbers. Obviously, 2021 was one of the more epic years, 26, seven and three. And again, these are numbers from when we picked on the show, but I mean, kind it, of an epic run. It was it was dubbed the half inning, uh, nearly 80. Uh, percent We jokingly set the bar at 69 percent that year. The first smashed it. I, I mean, the, the, ever, who can forget the first the the, the ten team parlays we were seeing coming <laughs> in with the first ten hitting. And honestly, a documentary was made on uh, to to commemorate the moment. So obviously, all timer. And I, I didn't. I was going to get into this earlier, but last year, 2014 and two, nearly 60 percent right there, 59 percent. I feel like what we had last year was a little of that sharp. Like oh, we well, it, unders were so good last year. There's going to be value on the over. And what I was going to respond to you earlier when it was time for us to flip the switch. I don't think we'll ever need to flip the switch because hmm. the fucking spreadsheet nerds out there are, are, are always going to be looking at things that can regress and and angles that are uh, too skewed to one side. I mean, imagine if you looked at this trend over. Oh, why do I have the wrong fucking numbers here? Let me pull up this thing. If you were to look at the the, the a trend that was two tw- uh, two twenty five, one fifty seven, and fourteen, fifty nine percent over eleven years. Oh yeah, but oh, that yeah. would be credible. And you might want to go look to go the other way they, because they, you would say, s- "Hey, regression is coming." <laughs> I'll go further. They're all, the only uh, excluding the year we didn't get basketball. We'll call that a push, not a loss. Three losing seasons only. Yeah, three no, losing seasons. It's been an insane run, and and the formula makes sense, right? It's one. There could be nerves. It's uh, and this one I I hadn't thought about as much, but Kramer pointed it out. Uh, we're actually preparing some data for Capwise. Uh, oh, yeah. They're putting out a, uh, a a nice March Madness betting guide. Head over to Capwise c a p w i z e dot com. Shout Promo code SGPN. Yeah. Oh, Promo feet, code SGPN. You, know. you get five dollars off. And I, again. Let the nerds do the heavy lifting with a ton of research. I've already seen some of the some of the highlights from their uh, PDF. It looks pretty awesome. So head over there, check it out. Uh, so you got the one. You have the 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 different start times. This was something I hadn't really thought about. But your body clock, especially depending on where you're playing the games, when you're used to playing those games, it could be super late. It could be super early. It's all over the place. Obviously, the the different sight lines. You're playing a a team you have no experience playing. I think Most that likely, could, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that could throw you off a little bit, or at least like, especially if you're a better team. Uh, and, and it no, could take a little bit till you till you uh, take a look halftime adjustments and then you really destroy them in the second half. Also, probably the biggest. I, I know that players play. It's like on, adrenaline and nerves. Players too. play on big stages now. I get that, but this is also probably going to be a big stage regardless because of what it is. Like even the routine of going to your conference tournament, you probably have some experience with. How about this? Also, the fact that. You get stuck in your conference. You're playing your conference foes one or two oh, times, yeah, maybe three times in a row for the past two. Now months, you're going to play months. this Big West team that you know, or or this, uh, yeah. you know, that that their philosophies are completely different. And, yeah, you yeah. might be seeing a defense yeah. you don't know how to beat until uh, maybe at halftime they're like, all right, start running this pick and roll. Here's how you beat the full core press. Whatever it is, there could be something quirky now, there. Now I would say we have started to see. Now I I I don't. I don't believe it's come to bite us yet, but a team like Texas Southern, who's now getting a little bit of little bit of uh, practice going to Dayton for the first four, I do. I mean, fortunately, they're not good, so there's that we we have going for us. I mean, they were thirteen to one to win uh, their low. Lately, mid, they've been good. Low mid major. Lately, but, they've been good. But in general, you're probably going to a gym. You may like maybe you've never even played in that gym yeah. before. Uh, maybe you've never stayed in that hotel before. So new routine, weird sight lines, new stage, yeah. and like you said, the I think the body clock thing is probably relevant as well. Like the like there's a lot of reasons why teams start slow and. Quite frankly, this is th- this is honestly I've 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 been thinking about this. If we were making a Mount Rushmore of things that we've talked about on the show or betting trends or like advice like we've given the the world, this is this is easily number one. Yeah, it, it jumps out. Uh, commandment number two: Thou shalt respect balanced teams. A uh, Kramer. This is basically <laughs> you need a top ten, a well, top right, twenty. So couple things. Ken Palm for adjusted offensive and efficiency to to actually win the title. Right? Okay, a couple things. So one, there. This this is a uh, misleading thing you'll see a lot of people tout, it, where like, oh, you have to be within the top twenty offense and defense to win uh, the championship since twenty 
or 2002, only UConn, who was 39 offense, 10 defense, Baylor, two second in offense, 22nd in defense, were outside of that at the end of the year. But Kansas does not qualify if you look at end of the year. But when we talked about it last year, they were outside the top 20. So the real thesis here, and I found someone that placed it a little bit more into a, a, a better box, but basically your cumulative rank for both offense and defense needs to drop be below 50. Oh, okay. So that's you, an easier UConn, formula. UConn is the outlier here still. So what I did was I broke it up into teams that were in the top 20 for both. Okay. But then I also include contenders who are near the top 20, who with a nice little run in the postseason could maybe elevate that <laughs> to be in the top 20, also be in this top 50 combined. So the teams essentially that we want to look at as legit contenders, UConn. Seventh offense, eighteenth defense. Houston, eleventh offense, fourth defense. Injury asterisk here, maybe. Yeah. Uh, Colby and I watched this injury happen in real time. Like dude fell down. It was classic basketball, college basketball. Yeah. Dude falls down, gets the court all sweaty. Mar- Marcus Sasser. They don't. They don't to, clear. Yeah. No, no, they don't clean it well enough. And then Sasser uh, kind of does the splits, groin. I don't think he, uh, groin injuries don't just recover in a week. I don't think he's going to be playing. Basket. Yeah, I mean, I mean, if it's he didn't it, play today against Memphis, but worst play. case, yeah. if it's a hamstring, I still feel like you're missing at least the first two games of the. So, day. They, but they they still qualify. Obviously, made a late push, almost uh, beat Memphis, or at least got it close with Memphis. Regardless, uh, you have Texas eighteen and eleven, Alabama nineteen and third defensively. So those would be the ones that are already qualifying. The ones who are on the edge: Arizona fourth and forty first on defense. Purdue fifth. Uh, we were talking about this in the offense, and I keep talking myself into Purdue. Purdue fifth offense, twenty oh, seventh defense. They're better defensively than they have. Marquette <laughs> eighth offensively. Zach Eady forty seventh defensively. He could be the best player on the court. West. He's going to be on the be- the best player on the court most games. West Virginia fifteenth. I can take that guy. Come on. Or 15th, Elbow jumper. He can't close out. Fifteenth and fifty second. Probably a little. I, I included them just to mention them because we love money line back Mac, but probably a little too fringe. The other fringe. Guys on the defense. Yeah, yeah, this one uh, UCLA twenty fifth offense first defense doesn't well, that qualify? I mean, well, that's what I'm saying. I, I just separated them. With, I it just wouldn't shock me if I, West Virginia made a run. I gave you the elite offenses with the the less than elite defenses. Yeah. Now this is the elite defenses with the less than elite offenses. You have UCLA twenty uh, fifth one, Tennessee forty nine two, Kansas twenty seven seven, St. Mary's fortieth offense ninth defense, Creighton twenty sixth offense fifteenth defense. They kind of stood out to me as a uh, a team that we should be probably looking at a little harder than I was uh, originally uh, going to. Oh, real, real quick, three more teams: Arkansas, fifty-first and sixteenth, probably a little too fringe, like West Virginia, Kansas State, fifty-second and nineteenth, and TCU, fifty-third and twentieth. I wanted to include all of those because they are Big Twelve teams, maybe a little bit more battle-tested. But that that list of uh, you know twelve to fifteen teams there, like that that in theory should be our list of. Real contenders should be noted also that uh, just like we mentioned the Sasser injury, injury with Houston, uh, obviously you have the situation at UCLA with two guys out, but Clark the big one, uh, Tennessee yeah. also was Zakai Ziegler is out for the season. A number of injury. You got the Bill Self situation at Kansas, um, which d- we'll 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 talk more Bill Self during the the, <laughs> the specific Bill Self commandment, um, but. Yeah, so that that to me, so starting there, it kind of you started looking at the bracket and like, all right, these are the teams I should probably have advancing, or at least final four teams should come out of this group. Now, the 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 other piece of this is that it, there are some profiles of teams that we're going to look to fade in the first round because historically, uh, over the last ten years, looking at a thirty nine percent ATS record for teams with top twenty adjusted offenses and defenses outside the top 100. Now, normally this list is only a couple teams, but this year we have an insane list of teams. We're going to maybe be looking to fade, or at least it's part of the, the discussion. Well, Rutgers, they didn't make it. Oh, well, I did this before the, uh, <laughs> well, no, that, that's uh that's, that's a different one, Sean, a oh, okay. uh, Baylor, which I love to hear Iowa love to hear Toledo. Well, Toledo didn't make exactly it. Yeah. made Kent, this, Kent made this State before made the, yeah. uh, the, the decision happened, Missouri. Mm, Miami again, two teams with veteran guard play, but uh, just trash defense. Penn State, Sean, your Nittany Lions, they fit this model. Providence, oh, I don't, I hate to hear this. New Mexico, these are all the teams so, I like. <laughs> a decent amount of teams here. 
Well, the, the obviously the thesis is you in a one game sample, your defense is more likely to be well, on, and and I think like hey, it's so it's okay to take these teams early in the tournament, yeah. but if you're putting, uh, you know, New Mexico, Providence, Penn State, or even Baylor, who's a team well, I've considered at times, maybe reconsider that because the 104 defense maybe not get into the final four, but eventually that defense is going to catch up. The stat I to. gave you of sub 40 percent was covering in the first round. Many of these teams will be favored. Uh, so it's kind. I think it's more of one of those. Maybe you're looking to play the other side, especially when that number is a little inflated because of what the team might be known for offensively. And then just to sprinkle it in, not as strong of a trend. This is more like 45 percent, but teams with horrible offenses and great defenses. Uh, to me, the, the great defense is more likely to provide outliers that kind of trickle into the tournament deeper. But Iowa State, uh, Mississippi, Mississippi State, Oak, oh, no, Oklahoma. Yeah, yep, they yeah. got uh, robbed. Northwestern and VCU. So Iowa State, uh, Mississippi State, Northwestern and VCU all kind of fit in that that form of fade. So uh, typically this section of the commandments only provides like a handful of teams. So it, interesting perhaps Some lopsided teams. Well, perhaps this sh shows the, you know, uh, the parity in college basketball. And and yeah, how wide open it is. All right, uh this is a great one. Thou shalt fade the first round upsets. This is basically if a team wins as a big dog and then they're a dog again, that's the time to fade them. You know, like a team like Lehigh, when they upset Duke, they got destroyed um, the next time. Now, obviously, there are once in a blue moon, you get the exception, but underdogs of at least seven points uh, that are coming off a straight up win as an underdog of at least six points have gone 11 and 26 ATS. Uh, so again, it's like if you were uh, if you were a dog back to back games, the second game is obviously where you could get into trouble. Underdogs coming off a double digit point win outright are three and seventeen straight up, five and fifteen ATS in their next game. So seven points is when it starts, but then the double digit outright upsets are really where it gets well. And let's remember, wonky. so last year we had Richmond and Saint Saint Peter's. Saint Peter's were the out. Yeah. Saint yes. Peter's went out did did it, did it again. So, but you know, I, I love the I love the thesis of this one just being. Being, you're, no, you're and it fading makes sense. recency. It's sad to do sometimes, and and it, it's always annoying when you're not on the team when they do it again. <laughs> but uh, St. Peter's, uh, logic Saint Peter's sound. treated me well. Sean, uh, no, I mean it's right up there with the, um, you know, like the uh, close your eyes special, similar yeah, logic, default play. Uh, which, by the way, number two in the power rankings behind first half under for me. Uh, Colby's Colby's uh, commandments coming up here, number five. But before that, thou shall ignore the seed number. All right, so why why are we ignoring the seed number? Because of it's the, bullshit. Well, I mean, <laughs> and, and we've seen as the community, as the world has gotten this is, smarter. This is for maybe some newer folks yeah. to March Madness. I mean, I feel like if you're listening to our show, you're probably aware of of the seeds don't matter. But it is there are a couple of good nuggets in here just in case you don't realize. So the one the one kind of seeding where it does matter, ten seeds, only fifteen of the last forty uh, straight up victories. So. Maybe that's the one where you don't need to get Cupa five twelve. You know, it's it's the one that everyone points to always, and you'll see twelve seeds favored. I I don't know. I haven't actually looked to see if we have any this year, but uh, typically the the spread will be close since tw twenty twelve straight up twenty one and nineteen. Uh, the five seeds have been, but only fifteen twenty four and one ATS. So uh, you know, th not obviously what's the th they're they're winning games maybe and not covering. Um, undervalued the 12 seed most likely. Typically, you have a less than stellar ma major conference team versus a co either a conference winning or a really strong mid major, and, and that that logic is pretty is pretty sound to me. Although I will say you have some strong five seeds this year. A team like Duke, for example, to me stands out. Uh, also, 2019 was the first time in 30 years that no 12 seeds advanced. So n another nugget there. So one, one typically does. So when you're filling out the bracket, make sure you don't pick all fives. Uh, some other outlying nuggets here. Uh, at least one 13 seed has won a game. Yep. There's always ten, one. Uh, it's always Vermont. I feel like, are ten, they a 13 seed? 10 out of Honestly, the last 15, 15, 15. Really? Year. Yeah. I well, feel like they're like the, every time I get a bracket, I just look at Vermont 13 seed. I'm like, all right. So 10 out of 13, <laughs> we got a good match. So 10 out of <laughs> they play the game, right? 10 out of 13 years, a four seed, a 13 seed has advanced. And 
Uh, five 15 seeds have advanced to the second round in the last nine tournaments. Well, so. it used to be almost as rare. I feel like that's one out of two years. Well, yeah. I, and I remember because I went, uh, I forget whatever <laughs> year it was, whatever year Michigan State lost oh. as a two seed. I fucking got my ass. That was a, uh, that's a middle Tennessee. Coach, right? No, yeah. that was. Oh, I'm, I'm misremembering. Middle Tennessee. Middle State. Tennessee, I think. Yeah. I was thinking of Georgia State. Yeah, he got Mizzou, wrong, wrong. was that? Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess the logic is, and I, I know I, I highlighted this on last year's show that uh, I believe now in five out of 10 seasons, if you just took the, uh, every 12 seed up on the 12 through 15 seed on the money line, you would profit. So again, th the dogs are coming home. And honestly, if you look at it, you can probably say I was starting to do the deep dive, but the six eleven. Data is starting to look very similar to the five twelve. So, uh, same thing, right? You're facing a, a less than stellar mi major conference team versus a mid major that probably is pretty fucking good. Matt checks out. Hey, before we get to the rest of the commandments, shout out to Shady Rays. Oh man, I was just uh, rocking my Shady Rays all weekend. Can't wait to take them out to Las Vegas. Normally, I'm paranoid to take my sunglasses mm. out to Vegas. So many ways you can destroy a pair of sunglasses in Las Vegas, but you don't have to worry about that with Shady Rays. That's what's great. If you lose or break your pair of Shady Rays, even on day one, they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. Uh, when you when you rock Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after your purchase and again you look good you bet good these things are really sharp the uh, the polarized uh, lenses that I got with like the reflection looks so sweet did a little skin they looked badass everyone's like man you're so cool what is it what what do you got going on Stack trip, the money. Trip. I go, it's so shady race. Use promo code SGPN over at shadyrays.com for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades that are rated five stars by over 200,000 people. That's shadyrays.com, promo code SGPN. He's wearing the shady rays even when he snorkels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he snorkeling. You can, you can get them for, uh, mm -hmm. you can get them for. I, I did hit both my locks while I was snorkeling, uh, just for the record. But you can get them for uh, snowboarding, whatever. Yeah, polarized is polarized. All right, gun to your head, just to, to tie a bow on it. San Diego State, Charleston, Duke, Oral Roberts, St. Mary's, VCU, Miami, Drake. Which which five seed? Miami, St. Mary's, Duke, San Diego State. Which one loses? I, I mean, I, I love that. I love that San Diego State defense. I feel like people will be, and as as annoying as uh, it is to pick Duke, um, I'm going to dive deep with the research team. I, I haven't put on my scuba scuba hood quite yet, but D Duke should I, be a, a like a, a Duke's a better seed than a five seed. I think Duke is. Um, they're ready to fuck people up. I think, especially in the oh, first round. Unfortunately, so I would look to I, and Duke and San Diego State immediately. First glance, my instinct was I'm not taking those teams to be upset. We'll see where we land ATS, yeah. but I don't know. What do you think Colby? Is there a sneaky uh, dog out of those? Yeah, I actually think, and I think the gap over the past 10 years has gotten more narrow and narrow and narrow. So uh, this year, es essentially, I feel like I, I wouldn't be surprised if you had three upsets there. Well, um, again, Miami fits the profile of a team. You might want to fade in the first round. Uh, to me, it's VCU. It's a VCU St. Mary's in a rock fight. Yeah, I think Oral and Roberts and Duke. You, I mean, Oral Roberts is gonna have the best player on the court. Corey, or Corey, Col Colby. Do you know where the VCU <laughs> St. Mary's game is being played? Uh, Al that is Albany, Albany New York. All right, cross country trip for St. Mary's. They didn't do them any favors with that one. True. Not that Albany's close to anything, but uh, yeah, I would say if I if you're gun to my head, it's St. Mary's is the five seed that loses. Well, and, uh, yeah, make sure you turn into our picks podcast because we have special guest mm. on part two, part one. Of course, we will be taping Monday, part two, Tuesday, and uh, get you ready to go. Coming to you live from Las Vegas, and we will be doing uh, nighttime episodes after round uh, round one games, yes. or as they're concluding. Uh, probably go live around eight p.m. Pacific each day, so that'll be fun. All right, Colby. Um. Five, five no, come on this is uh, your this yeah, is your I do love this one because this is but th I'll, I'll be honest I'm a little shaky on this this year's one but thou shall respect the play in mm -hmm. game 
Uh, only once since 2011 did a play did a play-in team not make the round of 32. So basically, they win two games. Yeah, five times a play-in team has reached uh, at least the Sweet 16. Uh, two times a play-in team has reached the Final Four. And That's play-in, insane. I yeah. like Q's to go on a run here. <laughs> The play-in game. They're in a different type of play-in game. <laughs> play-in game is as old as this podcast, Sean. That is crazy. Um, really? Twenty, yeah, 2011. In 2011 is when they started the playing game. Yeah. Fuck, I'm old. Didn't you just hear that beautiful stat? No, Only one I know. Time. I, it, it, it's just. I guess it's. All not right. Quite so here, here, here are the play-in teams. To, to well, me, the teams that look to make a run. It's uh, got to be an 11 seed. Yeah, and, and since we're gonna pick the games later, we, we don't have to say. We, we saw Virginia right. lose to UMBC. We don't, we don't have to say who right. we like to win the game, but here, <laughs> they didn't get to the final four. Here, well, here's who fa- here's who is facing a play-in team: TCU. Hmm. There, there's maybe a re- and then Iowa State. Two teams that showed up in the fade list. Hmm. Uh, so certainly, certainly fits some stuff here. As far as the 16 seeds, uh, Alabama could crime pay. And Purdue, so I mean, it would be sweet, sweet. I mean, Purdue uh, lost to St. Peter's last year. <laughs> it's All right. true. Do I need to it's say any more? Uh, St. Peter's is a really. I good mean, could you season. make a, a case Nevada's better than uh, St. Peter's? Oh wait, those are the ele- yeah, yeah. yeah, but that's TCU. See, that's another one. You, were you really gonna back Alfred? See, to me, if I'm fading the team, it's this Iowa State team. I actually think. I mean, look, I love TCU, but. Mm. Uh, Arizona State is one we've been saying on the college basketball experience oh, all year from a talent perspective. Now, here's the problem is they have a Hurley. I love to fade Hurley's yeah. call March. Um, but but it's a, it's from Alfred a talent Hurley. perspective, <laughs> it's an all time fade coach game. From a talent perspective, I think Arizona oh, State yeah. is one that is capable of beating anyone on any given day. Uh, Shout out to the social team. Josh, before, like three days ago, he created a graphic with Arizona State. On the cover for the first four, so how, how he knew that? Yeah, it's a sign. Well, that, that's what Hurley's been doing. They've never <laughs> got in without the first four. Um, uh, Mississippi State's another one that I think you know. Obviously, Mississippi State Pitt. That's going to be an interesting game because Mississippi State can go through these long ass droughts of of scoring, which always make them susceptible to be picked off. But the way they play defense, Mississippi State's a team. If they play Iowa State, if they get past Pitt. That Mississippi State Iowa State game first first of thirty five wins. So Mississippi State Iowa State rock fight. That is a rock fight, man. That's two uh, of the best defenses. Both on the fa- both on the fade list. So there is that. Yeah. Uh, next up, thou shall not believe in fairy tales. Since nineteen eighty five, only four teams outside the top three seeds had won the national championship. So. The idea is, the idea is. I think this year might be one of those. Oh, yeah. yes. Of course, I love it. Let's go, Kyle. Or oh. Ky- now I'm calling you Kyle. Colby's been pretty dialed into this. The last two years, he kind of, he kind of was was on to some chalk getting through because of the path. Well, so, and, but last year though, let's be honest. Carolina blew an 18 point lead in the national championship. Carolina was what? What were they well, seeing last year? And the second part yeah. of this is 16 of the 148 Final Four teams have come from. Uh, Inside or outside the top seven, UNC was one of those last yeah. year as an eight seed. Um, no, so I, as especially as the tournament goes on, as NIL, like everything, it does seem to be more and more open. Like the blue bloods aren't as dominant as they seem. The, is or there at least year over year? They so get. all right. So the the, the big they're losing nu- their stranglehold. The big nugget here is that a very small percentage of Final Four teams have come from outside the top seven. So, with, w- is there a team outside the top seven seeds, Colby, that stands out to you? I mean, instant reaction. I know you just did a full reaction pod. If you want to check it out, college basketball experience podcast feed, yeah. YouTube channel. No free plugs, Ryan. <laughs> I think I like to. Don't worry, they're all in here anyway. I like uh, to. Oh, there you go. <laughs> See, uh, I try. I was trying to keep the talent happy, Sean. Uh. I think there's a lot, man. I think this is an interesting year because Ed Cooley, Providence, even, they are away from home. Even your top seeds, we just alluded to this briefly. You know, like UCLA injury problems. Kansas, McCuller was injured. Bill Self hasn't been healthy. That's a that's a distraction. Houston just lost Sasser. Now will he be healthy? Who knows? Also, Houston plays in a a, a smaller conference where can they can they you know rattle off all these wins against elite competition? We don't know. 
Um, Do you want a super hot take? I mean, Kentucky. Ba- Bama's seed. got the gun to stretch. USC's path is intriguing. <laughs> well, so is Michigan State. I like Michigan State. Well, whoever yeah. comes Michigan out of that State's, game. if they can get past, uh, I mean, it as works. A for seven both seed teams. Tom Izzo. I think there's a lot. I I like Kent State. I think Kent State's a 13 seed. They re- remind me a lot of Loyola Chicago. Utah State. Um, uh, they'll play yeah. their first games in Sacramento. I do think you want something out of the East and the South regions. Oh, I think yeah, those two because are ba- the easiest regions. Because Bama could lose to anyone or beat anyone by 40. Uh, but they could also lose to West Virginia in the second round. Or you San know? Diego State. Yeah. Or, or Virginia. That's not a that's not an easy matchup. I mean I saw Terrell Furman put in a uh I think it was a hundred to one to win it all on Kent State as the thirteen seed. Oh wow. We've been high on them oh all year. God. We've been high and look, <laughs> all right, well, they, they, we know played, what's well, they might be the thirteen <laughs> seed. Upset. They, they, they played at Houston and lost, I think it was by two, uh, held Houston to oh, forty nine points. I already can see it. Yeah. We always get a twelve thirteen in the second round. Drake versus Kent State. Let's fucking I like go. the ring of that. All yeah. right. Next up. You know me, Ryan. Oh, Big yeah, uh, free throw one. guy. Keep holy thy free throw percentage. Again, uh, shout to uh, Adam Rosenberg helping me do some deep dive on some modeling. Finding ex- it seems like the cutoff percentage where it really makes a difference. Uh, ATS is 77% mm. from the line. Teams that shot 77% or higher uh, free throws during this this regular season. 60 a 30 60 38 and 2 ATS. Ooh. Teams that shot 77% or more from the uh free throw line uh I think in last year's tournament 11 and 2 ATS uh, and, and I think a lot of that was Villanova. Yeah. Just Villanova well, was the so best free throw shooting team <laughs> ever last year. <laughs> which yeah. is annoying that they didn't make it in cuz that that guard, you know, again, we go back to like guards get to the line, hit your shots. Again, I I I couldn't find the best numbers, but I also like a, a, a nice difference. Like if you get a double digit difference in free throw percentage, you got to take the the better team at the line. Um, some of the teams that fit this model that hit at a really high percentage: Texas A and M, Corpus Christi, Nevada. So two of the first four teams: Oral Roberts, Miami, all uh, all up there. Nice. Oral Roberts. Who doesn't love a good oral? All right, Colby, you want to take the next one? Uh yes, we got uh, thou shall fade major conference tournament winners, which I do believe in this one. Yes, uh, so on the broadcast tonight, Jay Wright basically said 100%. It's so much better when you like get knocked out in the first yeah. round. Yeah. He, he more or less was like it was well, a big and, reason and Baylor, why we had our run. Uh, Baylor the, when they won, uh they got knocked out in the first. Now obviously first there are you know, you can reference Yukon who's an outlier for most things. The, the and, Kevin Ali UConn team, yeah, yeah. When yeah. when they they've just when they, they Jim Valvano NC State team, those are yeah. rare exceptions. Yeah, yeah, where you you just like something magical happens and you remember it because just like you remember hitting a ten team parlay, it's fucking awesome. But most of the time, it doesn't go down like that. And quite frankly, the area where the mid majors have the advantage is that they're done earlier. And yeah. I, I do think you know. Call no, it a day. Call it two days extra rest when you're coming off three, four. F- you know, it's like exponentially. So either you're you're parlaying into playing game after game and maybe playing four or five games in a row, or you're getting knocked out early because it doesn't fucking matter, and you have those extra two, three days. I like, for example, uh, Houston. If they lose to ECU to your Pirates. Close. They, they don't Close lose call. Sasser. Yeah. And they're a little bit more well rested. Obviously, because uh, uh, winning the conference didn't seem to matter to them at the, in the end. Yeah. They didn't I mean, play like honestly, a team that wanted to win. Uh, honestly, UCLA kind of worried me how they're that uh that Pac 12 conference tournament because they they played their ass off. They played really hard. Uh they got a little, you know, I, I mean I think he's gonna be fine, but Hawkes tweaked something in that Arizona game. They had that hard fought battle against them. That was last night, you know? And All right. So so, so who- I, I'm slightly worried that maybe they look past one of these teams in the early rounds. I, I think once they get past that first weekend, they're good, but who, I, I think they're maybe susceptible. So I'll probably are, still pick them to to make a run, but it's certainly a little concerning. So okay, per, so Purdue is one, Bama's one. Yeah, I was gonna say let's go through the list. So Purdue Duke, and Bama. Duke is one. Duke, Marquette, yeah, Texas. Yeah. D- does do all right, so that's like the what are the big six conferences? So yeah, Texas, Marquette, Duke, Arizona, Alabama, Purdue. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I mean, look, Memphis any, was another one that was right outside of there. Any yeah. issues fading any of those teams? No, uh, not I, I at would, all. I would say we probably need to potentially think about the Atlantic Ten. Uh, they, I think, part of this is just how hard are, is each round of your conference tournament. And so I, I think you know maybe you have to include them. Maybe you have to include the 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 Mountain West with San Diego State like that. That's, yeah. but I, I think just in general, uh, certainly looking to to fade them wholesale, especially the ones that are. See now you guys got me thinking I need to fade Purdue. I really think Purdue was entering the realm of needing to be in my final four. Uh, maybe if I, I think so does Duke though. I don't know what to he do. Disappoints this, me. He they, disappoints me. He disappoints me. I mean Purdue. They're they're just fucking Purdue, right? Yeah. I mean that's uh, maybe we just add this. I know we'll. I don't want to. So I don't want to jump ahead. But I feel shall, like. I feel like. I feel like ten. Yeah. We might be able to update to something Purdue related. Thou shall not uh, associate with butt munches. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Come on. <laughs> Which just by like the way, these fucking that, that, that means we fade Mark Few though, right? Did, did you guys see? <laughs> he's kind of a. Did you guys see the picture of uh, Derek Carr sitting at the Pelicans games oh, yeah. with his family, looking like no, Drew, a Drew Bre- a Drew Brees clone? <laughs> it's pretty fun. It just made me think of that got a great speech Drew Brees once gave about you can do anything. Yeah. You, you can uh, follow your dreams. Please. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, Drew. How are you mic'd up for that, bro? All right, nine. Thou shalt not worship false idols. So Ryan finding the best and uh, best NCAA tourney records against the spread. Uh, Andy Enfield for USC oh. ten and two. Matt Painter oh, of Clark. Purdue. Oh, oh, there you go. You're back on Purdue. Oh, Nineteen not- and twelve. Hey, we should put it's, an asterisk there. It's yeah. a large, large. Z- uh, Sean Miller over at Xavier. Uh, that one makes a ton of sense. Seventeen, eleven, and two ATS. Jim Bay. I kept him Ryan, on the list. Had a, we want yeah. you have to. 55, 36, and three against the spread. People go to me, oh, why do you like Syracuse? You never went there. I like winning fucking money. 55, <laughs> 36, and three. That's more they than. Gotta, <laughs> they gotta explain anything more? That's more than all the other guys combined. On Sean's gonna donate to the old folks home. Oh, right? come on. He's a, have you seen his wife? Make, guys, sure, make sure they have banana doesn't pudding. Need sort of vitality. Yeah. He's, he's this care. next portion of the list surprised me. Best records as dogs ATS. Sean Miller again, Xavier, eight and two. Bruce Pearl out of Auburn, eight and three ATS. He was not a guy that w- I would have initially that guessed. That probably goes Smash. back to yeah. when he was at Milwaukee. Yeah, it, yeah. it probably has some Sha- unfair yeah. games in there. Shaka Smart, uh, eight and three ATS again, as a dog. VCU. And, that probably was a lot of that VCU run. Uh, probably helped well, Pat the stat. Dana Altman of Oregon, 13, five and one. When he was ATS. at Creighton. Yeah, yeah, same thing. Probably yeah. a lot of older stuff. But still, the dog doesn't leave you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Worst NCA records ATS. And there's some fan favorites here. <laughs> well, this is the key thing, right? And I, honestly, Sean, you know, there's a name we didn't mention in the past, and that's Tom Izzo, who has cooled off of late. He used to be amazing. Yeah. I yeah. feel like. Um, and I'll have some data for the second round uh, episodes, but like some some of where you're gonna get benefit there is looking like zoning in on like the 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 short turnaround games with him still, but yeah, not on the overall list. But anyway, the the bad coaches that that came that showed up here, uh, they made sense to me. Jamie Dixon, TCU, nine and seventeen. Oh, of course, Rick, Rick Barnes again. That's <laughs> yeah, he could have his own commandment. I think yeah. he's right up there, nineteen and thirty two ATS. Yeah. That that's a commandment. Uh Randy Bennett, uh Saint five Mary's. and eight oh, at ATS. It's yeah. a smaller sample ah, size. Yeah, they well no, that what what happens Different is, team. is they'll get seated against a power normally. So it yeah. kind of makes sense. And Eric, the last Eric one is Musselman. Yeah. Different team. He was with yeah. the, the Nevada. Nevada. Yeah. Uh and then well, this last section is 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 actually, I think, where we take action on these teams. Worst NCA records as a favorite straight up. Shaka Smart one and four straight up. That one makes a ton of sense. <laughs> be, and Vermont. They'll, and, and they'll be a, and Vermont. They'll be, they'll be a favorite here, right? Greg Gard at Wisconsin yeah. two and three. Little smaller sample size. Fran uh, Fran McCaffrey oh, yeah. three and three straight up. Uh, oh yeah. Jamie Dixon <laughs> eleven and nine straight up. Yeah. Uh, but one and four. One and four ATS. Run. Let's go fade. Yeah. Uh, Rick Barnes only twenty four and eighteen straight up as a favorite. So that's that's impressive considering it mostly him being like a one two or three seed. <laughs> that is. I mean, that if is. you think about it that way, that's that's uh, that's not how it's supposed to go. All right, last one. Thou shall bet against Bill Self after the first round of the tournament. Which, as I went to go update this, I realized this man just defeated death. Yeah, and he's walking back out to coach college basketball. 
Cancel so this one. I think God is telling us we're can't we're only having nine commandments. So I scratched <laughs> it off. It's like uh in the uh, history of the world where he drops the third tablet. <laughs> there'll be fifteen there'll be ten. Well, well, we're only having nine <laughs> here. Thou shalt fade private school pussies. How about that? Well, yeah. no, yeah, no. I just go. like yeah. I, I actually think the the tenth commandment is now B- Bill Self, tragic magic. Oh yeah. From the from 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 death's bed to a national to a back to back national Ooh. championship, cementing him Ooh. as one of the all time greats. I like I've it. I've seen this story before. I like it. Yeah. So I think the tenth commandment is thou shall back Bill Self. <laughs> I don't know. Even it, even Bill Self on some tragic magic. I, I, I don't know. This I I had a I did and I did see like an all time great nugget. This is the first time ever in the history of March Madness that the preseason favorite to win the national championship did not make the field of sixty eight. <laughs> yeah, North Carolina. <laughs> Hubert Yo, Davis, North, and they decline the <laughs> NIT. They think they're too good for the NIT. The highs and the lows. Yeah, I mean, come on. I mean, Hubert Colby's Davis is that. So- Hubert Davis. I just rewatched. Um, I just rewatched the movie Hangover. Great film. No. Really, really hangs up. Hubert Davis is uh, Heather Graham in The Hangover. Incredible highs when you're on top wow. of the world, you're pulling your own teeth out, and then incredible lows <laughs> when reality hits the next morning. You have an insane hangover. You're like, wait, what? What happened? This reminds me of like when UCLA just said, "I'm not going to play in a bowl game." Colby, can <laughs> you like, make note of all the teams that opt out of the NIT? Sure. Yeah. Sure. I let's go. I feel like it's only it's going to get bad. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's actually put some of these mental health. <laughs> let's actually go over these commandments and put them to work before we do. Shout out to Sword Vitality. Hey, it's March Madness uh, when it comes to making picks, but what about March Madness when it comes to your, you guessed it, your pricks, or you can go with dicks, whatever. They both work. You may be having your own March Madness in the bedroom. You need Sword Vitality. Unsheath your sword. We're talking about increasing your blood flow in ways that help you thrive as a man in the bedroom, increase your stamina. Again, I mean, you're watching 16 games back to back and then you have to make love. You're going to need uh, maybe a little edge. And again, you don't have to hide it. You can be proud of it. Unsheath your sword. Again, you're doing battle. You don't want to do battle with the soft sword. You need a rock hard sword. And again, you may already manscape, but you also need to take care of the plumbing. Unsheath your sword over at swordvitality.com. Promo code SGPN for a nice discount at checkout. That's swordvitality.com. Promo code SGPN. Just to be clear, <laughs> that metal is going to be much stronger than stone. So yes. you don't you don't you don't want to be rock hard. You want to be steel hard. Steel hard. Uh, like whatever the special steel that they make those new Lexington, sort of I believe they call it triple folded Lexington steel. Is that the that's the super hard cock steel? <laughs> All right, let's talk. We're picking games, Colby. Are you prepared? Always. All right. First up, we got the first four. We're heading to Dayton, Ohio. Uh, w- any chance they stop letting Dayton, Ohio host the first four every year, or is this just going to be a thing no? Forever? Why? Why would they? Well, I guess right, right call- now they have the whole uh, Chernobyl thing going on there, right? <laughs> you know what I mean? I, you know, you should. Probably- hey, you guys got that Chernobyl thing? You still, you're still good for the first round of the March Madness. Yeah, what's bracket, going right? on, guys? It's Ohio. Let's, go, let's put it on an aircraft carrier just to just to make it oh, safe. Uh, yeah, that's well, why did they not? Idea. I mean, this is just. I'm having an epiphany. Why the fuck did they not put March Madness 2020 on yeah. the aircraft carrier? Oh. We have aircraft carriers. Yeah, distance. You test just, everyone. Ain't no. You all just, the teams. <laughs> test them all. Put them on one point. aircraft carrier. That's a great and then, point. And then you have. And then that if you lose. Great point. If you get knocked out of the tournament, send him seaworthy. No, <laughs> I was saying have more good. Hey, hey, you lost the tournament. Hey, you're peeling potatoes. You know what I mean? Like you, you work on this ship I as like part this. of it. That's How much education? I that's, that's fucking. I could have saved March Madness. How many yeah. aircraft carriers do you think we have as a nation? Oh. Dude, I can't even disclose that to you. They're only yeah. using M- eight more, arena. more than, more nine than <laughs> Do we have nine? Yeah, you ever? Dude, we had nine. Okay, we had nine in one yeah. harbor. Yeah. Come on. So we could have parked them. In the sea, socially distanced, and figured it the fuck out. That's, that's but, really, but even better, why are you we guys not? are bumming me out now? Because I mean, if you're a San Diego State fan or a Dayton fan, what do you mean? Uh, they were one seeds in that tournament. No, yeah. oh, but San Diego State won the national championship. I'm not, I'm not, right. I'm not right. supposed yeah. to disclose this, but as of March 2023, we have 47 active carriers mm. in the world. Yeah, all right. So we have plenty to host a, a little. Well, U.S. Ball. U.S. owns 11 of them. 
All right, so that's more than nine, so we're yeah. good to go. Yeah, yeah, we're good. And uh, again, I mean, we could have got a couple international ones chip in. <laughs> we're all in this together. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. it's like these private space companies buying up all these parts. What from about Russia. Alcatraz? <laughs> we could have played it on Alcatraz. Yeah, uh, honestly, they got like, a baseball diamond. Did you see that photo? Yeah, did, in all man. seriousness, we'll play a little pickup. Why are we not making a bigger spectacle out of the first four? Dayton, Ohio, is not the best we can do. Because you could do like a, you could do an out outside game like near the beach, Venice Beach. Oh, yeah. You could play in Rucker. I mean, you could do something. That's a little here. gimmicky though. Too gimmicky. A little too gimmicky. All right. right. Go go. Like well, let's go back to Dayton. All right. Sounds fun. Colby likes it. Sixteen seeds squaring off here. You guys nailed Semo, Southeast Missouri State. I got that Semo money. All right, we're gonna we're gonna Sh Sean si sitting here. Semo money, Semo problems. Colby. Sean's over here diving with Colby. So what what conference Yee! is Semo in? Ohio Valley. Oh, come on, let's not it's, see oh. it. Oh, I thought you were asking that, me. That's not the uh, Colby. Of course oh, you know. Of sorry. course you know the the answer to sorry. these questions. I would never insult you to ask you such a stupid question about college <laughs> basketball. But that was for Sean. Uh, you guys nailed them to win the conference. They're catching four points here, plus one sixty on the money line against uh, Texas A and M Corpus Christi, a squad that I had winning what conference, Colby? No, wait, am I supposed to answer this yep, or not? You're supposed okay, to answer this for the me. Southland, the Southland. Yeah. So again, both uh, these these helped you build that bankroll for the first half unders. Uh, minus one ninety on the money line, money line for for an A and M Corpus Christi. Remember, I deployed the I bet on every A and M school. Yes. Uh, in Strong postseason system. play, one fifty three and a half is the total for the game and the first half total seventy two and a half. Well, obviously, lock up that first half under, and then uh, for me, it's pretty obvious to take Texas A and M. Corpus Christi. We just laid out one of the 10 commandments and that was going towards free throw percentage. Uh, T Texas A and M Corpus Christi, 80% from the line. SEMO oh, yeah. only uh 71.8% Texas A and M Corpus Christi, 58% or sorry, 58th in the country in offensive rebounding percentage 38th. Uh, when it comes to shooting the three ball, their offense to me is the best uh, unit on the court here. And I, I think this spread, I mean, win bet is very generous the way they're pricing it only at four. I, I wouldn't make this my pat. My model has this is at five and a half shading towards six points. I think they're a better team. So the, the, you, you failed to mention what I think is maybe a critical point and they were here last year. Yeah. So not, uh, not going to be nervous. Perhaps uh I mean, in ba I, I, I'm not a big transfer portal guy, but based on the the roster, it appears like mo many of these guys were part of that team that played here last year. So, I, I, that's got to matter, right? Like having experience, going through the process, losing to Texas Southern. I, I, I love that. Uh, I like the the nugget there, the numbers you threw out and, there. And it might feel like a, a business trip a little bit more. Oh, We're wow. like SEMO. They won their conference tournament as eleven to one. Yeah, not uh, the favorites. They weren't. They weren't supposed to win. The no, they tournament. they dumped the Gatorade when they won that when they won their conference uh, tournament. And now it's like, are they really going to get up for this first spot? Maybe, but I, I don't know. The the numbers, the situation, just favor Texas and I, Corpus Christi. And I should have done this before the the we started because I put these numbers in earlier. But it's a, it's actually three and a half. So Jesus Christ! I don't want what an opportunity. Colby, what are you doing? I'm on, yeah, I'm on Corpus Christi. They're pretty much better all around. Uh, much better offense, charting at 37th in the nation. Much better defense by about 50 spots. They take better care of the basketball. They uh, are a much better offensive rebounding team, and as you alluded to, Sean, free throw shooting. They are one of the better free throw shooting teams. Second in the nation. Also three point shooting. They're just yeah. a better team all around now. And, and you can't even use the argument. I feel like, well, they're in the Southland Southland competition. Well, the Ohio Valley wasn't great this year either. So I think you go Corpus Christi. They have the experience. Every every little thing I feel like goes in their favor. Yeah. I I think the one thing that uh, that is interesting is Simo plays at a very high pace. I mean, I, Corpus Christi plays at a fast pace too, but especially Simo. That will be pretty interesting to watch. Kind of a track meet here in Dayton. I mean, but that that doesn't hurt them. It's not like they're playing outside their yeah their I comfort agree. zone. Unless is that what you're, is that the argument you're trying to make? No, I'm, I'm taking Corpus Christi. Okay. I'm just saying like that's something like I, I guess Southeast Missouri State. The fact they're in the Ohio Valley Conference, no stranger 
to playing in Ohio. Okay. I mean, I, I'm with you there. That makes sense. All right. Next up, we're all on the, the same thing. So, Discord, welcome to the party. And just a quick update total 154 and a half, first half 73. So, first half under. Uh, we, we all agree we're taking the under on this one, right? Yes. All right. Yes. Next up, 6 10 p.m. on the West Coast. We're still in Dayton. It's an 11 seed matchup between Pittsburgh and Mississippi State. Hail State, minus one and a half for the the Bulldogs minus 125 on the money line Pittsburgh plus 105 132 is the total 62 is the first half number which I think I'm going to speak for Sean and Colby we're all on the first half under Colby yes sir yeah. we love Hale State they can't fucking score the rock to save their life are we taking him here they yep. showed they showed up on our bad offense elite defense uh, teams to fade you know who's a bad defensive team? Pittsburgh. You know who ma that makes your offense a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. And I trust Chris Jans. All right, okay. Chris Jans. What did we do last March? We took New Mexico State. New Mexico State beat UConn and almost won. Who was their second game that they played uh, against Arkansas? They almost beat Arkansas. I think Chris Jans is a difference maker. Give me Hail State to get it done against Pitt. You know, see, I, 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 I see that case, but in a game where the spread is one and a half, I can't take a team that has given up almost 12 percentage points at the line. Oh like no. we, again, uh -oh. there, there, there's a Here couple, there's a couple of red flags for this Mississippi state team. They can't hit free throws to save their life. And that's an easy way to generate offense. If you're, if your offense is struggling, they have talent. They're a fun team to bet on because of how good their defense is, but but they will get easy second opportunities around the offensive glass. I, I do think. They, well, they are good. I mean, honestly, like the advanced metrics, their offensive rebounding percentage is their best one. They're fifteenth in the nation. But man, this Pitt team, I think. Yeah, I gotta. I'm going Pitt, especially as a dog. I love the Mississippi State angle. The fact that uh, to me, Pitt. Has never do they have anyone that's played in tour? I guess they have um, maybe what one or two guys. Ah, it's Jeff Capel. We can't. I'm. I'm. I didn't even bring that up, but I'm. I'm certainly not going to back Jeff Capel. So have fun. Have fun with that, Sean. You're All right. If it, well, oh yeah. Do I do I make my first? Ooh. Come on, dude. We're Benedict. It, you know what else? We're getting value here because Alabama is not the best matchup for them. Is that I'll, I'll, I'm going to score... let Moneyline Max officially sway me. Oh wow, okay. But he hates in the Pitt. chat. He of oh, course. Oh wait, he... that's right. Yeah, yeah he hates Pitt. All right, you're I'll, taking Pitt. <laughs> I'll go Mississippi State minus one and a half. I'm not liking this up though because I I think Pittsburgh's going to be alive. Now now the uh well the chat what do they have another pick. Maybe they should par lamb. All right. So those were the Tuesday games. Uh, we'll be out in beautiful Las Vegas watching those games, Sean, with uh with great anticipation. Can't wait to hit my first March Madness bet. First March Madness under. Moving along to Wednesday, 3 40 p.m. on the West Coast. 16 seed matchup between FDU Fairleigh Dickinson of New Jersey and Texas Southern. Great. Great uh, message today from. Uh, let me make sure I nail this. Um, what are we nailing? About how they failed us, and that was Cash Juno, I believe. Oh no, Cash Juno. Great, great uh, message here that the selection committee, f uh, you know, really failed us. We should have had a Simo against Fair Dick. Simo <laughs> uh, Dick. Yeah, Simo Fair. Simo Fair Dick. Um, Match up in the 16s. They they had it right there for them, and they just missed it. They screwed it you up. Know, they missed it. So uh, we we have the winner of the Northeast and the Southwestern, the SWAC, facing off here. Texas Southern, I believe this is their third straight year playing in a play-in game. Is that? Can you confirm that, Colby? I believe you're accurate yeah. here. Yeah. So again, uh, we 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 liked it when it was Corpus Christi. I, I got to imagine we got to run back the same logic. And again, not, not super deep into the roster, but just looking at the guys who contribute, three of them are seniors. Got to, got to think they were here. Uh, they did have to go on the run. Uh, they did have to win their conference tournament as a eight seed. I'm on, I'm on fairly Dickinson. I think their offense best unit on the floor by a big uh, margin. Again, you're talking about a 9% difference in free throw percentage. 
Uh, and actually, I'm gonna go back to Pitt. I'm gonna stick to oh, my guns. Wow. I'm gonna stick to my guns when it comes to free throws. They're gonna matter. FDU, shortest team in the nation. Shortest. Fairly average Dickinson. Height. Yep. Well, Texas almost Texas Southern's almost dead last in the nation when it comes to hitting the three point ball. Here's the other thing: I can't bet on these teams that just cannot hit a shot to save their life, and that's why I'm switching my pick uh, to Pittsburgh instead of Mississippi State because it's such a painful wow. way to start the to start the March Madness tournament where I'm already rooting for the first half under. I'm already rooting for all these teams to miss. And then the second half, when I want the teams to score, they can't flip the switch. I'm on FDU. Not they're in the bottom ten in experience as well. So I uh, shortest team and one of the least experienced teams in the country. Well and they're a team that didn't win their conference tournament. Oh that remember that? This is a team that backdoored this thing because Mary Mack was not oh. eligible. Uh so there's that side of it as well. The question is, is can Texas Southern stay hot because they were kind of ass or, you know, most of the year, but they've got, they've caught, they've caught lightning in a bottle again. They have a knack for doing this. It seems like um, we watched the game. They I beat mean, Arizona state this year. Texas beat, Southern they, did. Grambling's so, a good team. Yeah. That was a good win. I I, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm going to lean into the experience angle and just take Texas Southern here. Me too. I think the athleticism is a little bit different. The, the NEC kind of lacks athletes and I feel like Texas Southern can take advantage of pretty that. wild to think about it, but half the teams, uh, half the 16 seeds were here last year. So, all right, six ten on the West coast Wednesday, last of the first four two eleven 11 seeds here, squaring off Nevada and Arizona state. As we were discussing earlier, we got a Hurley, we got an Alfred, two two bet against teams for sure. Arizona State laying a point and a half, minus 120 on the money line. Nevada plus 100. 134 and a half is the total. 63 is the first half total. Colby and myself are on the under. Sean, uh, verbal. You know, let's make ver- it a let's make it a three. All right. Looks like the Discord's all on first half overs. <laughs> this game, this game's that really sucks, Discord. Really interesting. No, this one I I had the most trouble with as far as picking. Um, because you got Nevada doesn't turn the ball over, but they're not good at offensive rebounds. They're great at hitting their free throws. And then Arizona State, you know, you could talk me into them, but I feel like this matchup against Nevada is is not a good matchup for them. And you got Bobby Hurley as their head coach. Who Bobby well, Hurley? I mean, Steve Alford's the other coach. No, I yeah. know. I'm like, watch what you say here. Hey, huh. yeah. Bobby Hurley is uh, four and zero oh in first half unders in the turning, two and zero oh in the first four. So he's a first half under god. I don't know. I'm leaning. I'm leaning Nevada, but I. I, I could be swayed here. What are you doing, oh, Colby? This is classic. Take the Pac-12 I'm, uh, team. I, I'm on Arizona State. They're the better classic. defense. How about this too, though? Arizona State has two players that transferred from Nevada last year that play significant minutes for them. Mm, I think they'll Desmond be Desmond Cambridge and Warren Washington. I think that matters. I mean, I think that, that yeah, I think that might matter a little bit. And then uh, I like the revenge angle there. I, I I just think Alfred that Nevada didn't belong in the NCAA tournament, guys. Hate to tell you. I hate to tell you. I heard the Kansas State coach saying that he played Nevada and uh, Oklahoma State, and Oklahoma State was a better team. So yeah, I mean, obviously I'm trying to trying to do the whole conference bro thing, but uh, to me, I'm Hurley is not as such not as auto fade as Alfred. Is this a jersey take? It could be a jersey. <laughs> take. I, I'm I, with you. Sometimes it's just you. instinctual yeah. for me to. Get get align myself with the folks from the Northeast, as annoying as they are. I'll go. Actually, I'm. Uh, I'll go Nevada. The free throw percentage oh difference is just so massive. Seventy nine percent at the line for Nevada yeah. compared to sixty eight percent for Arizona State. Fits your system. Hey, come on! I got a model. It says take the, oh, especially shit. in the first four, take a team that's better at the line. I'm going Nevada. Can't talk me out of it. All right, so I feel like uh, Nevada also popped up in our. Did they not pop up? Arizona State did? Well, I, I feel like we were talking about one of these teams earlier. Nope. Dang, I was hoping Nevada was in the fade, the fade list. Yeah, I'm, uh, they are. They have Steve Alfred as the head coach. Well, <laughs> yeah. for different reasons. Oh, not, oh, not, not that's Bobby right. Hurley. That's right. Yeah. We were talking about the records. That's what I was thinking about. And uh we we discussed how uh oh man. He didn't show up on this list either. God damn. He hasn't it. played what? enough. When this. were we talking about Nevada? Remember when he was at UCLA? They way. never made the tournament. <laughs> this is bullshit. I I had I thought we had a Nevada sucks take. All right. Good luck, Sean. 
Time for the lock dog and bonus lock brought to you by WinBet. Head over to winbet.com and uh, sign up. Massachusetts, get involved. Kramer, what do you got? Well, either Colby's doing some shallow water diving. Yeah. Or, I mean, we agree on everything, and Sean is mm. sitting over here like a real jabron on an really? island. Oh, I mean, just well, we'll see. We'll see. College basketball. For college basketball. Yeah, well, he right? went. He went snow snorkeling. So he did. Yeah. He also talked about maybe doing overs earlier today, which ooh, we ooh, <laughs> ooh. we won't clip it or anything. It wasn't. It wasn't anything that needs to be talked about. Lock. Are we doing two locks? Yeah. Are you sure. sure. Uh, let's just do one. There's only four games. Can't be like Colby with his uh, USFL teams and like half the league. What are you worried? About? You're gonna forget one of the combos? three and one on my XFL picks. Three and one. It's not worth touting that around me. That <laughs> yeah, was four Kramer, and oh. Kramer's four and zero. Oh. I'm still 100 percent on my XFL locks. Can I tell you a funny stat, Colby? Six. Yeah. I'm 13 and three overall. My picks in the XFL, <laughs> but somehow I got two locks wrong. <laughs> it's because Seattle's lost twice. ATS bullshit. All right, lock number one. Oh boy, no matter what I do, I'm gonna be disagreeing with with old Sean over here. No, um, you should. I don't know shit about shit. According to everyone. He's, he's getting real sensitive. Thought the snorkeling bit yeah. was funny. Huh? Thought, thought, thought you went on he's a vacation. Up the, thought you went on a weekend getaway. He's up in the hot tub yeah. pissed off right now, which by the way, that picture of the truck with the, with the dudes floating around in the tube in the back is really funny. <laughs> Colby. All right. Arizona state's my lock. Ooh. Fade Alfred. What's your dog? Hmm. You don't. You and Colby are, are on all favorites. Just so you're aware. Yep, hmm. we're gonna we're gonna parlay experience matters. Texas Southern, Texas A and M, Corpus Christi. Let's go. Money lines. Money lines. Yeah. Okay. But that will pay. Uh, let's see. I'll I'll get the parlay price. You're up, Colby. Let Sean go last so he knows what we're picking. Two locks. We said no. Well, one, he no. only wants to do one. No capacity for two locks. Well, so. the the first lock is going to be Arizona State. Yeah, ah, dude, we're we're crushing yeah. it today. <laughs> we are crushing it today. What's your dog, Colby? You also don't have a dog. Yeah, right now. You want to join me change. on the experience um, matter? Oh, you're gonna do some no. benedicting? No, no, no. What 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 would you do again? Uh, we just we took the experience matters parlay, which pays plus one seventy five. And who, and who who was that again? It means that Texas A and M, Corpus Christi, and Texas Southern advance. They, they call this the Texas Two Step, don't they? Yeah, there you go. Let's go. All right, so I'm gonna I'll put the price in there plus one seventy five. That's a, that's a nice size dog, Colby. Yeah, Texas Two Step. See, we we uh, now let's hear it. Uh, Sean's different picks. Uh, for me, the lock of all locks: Texas Corpus Christi minus three and a half. I just fucking mushed it. <laughs> I know we're fucked. Guy. Right. And for my dog. I'll go with the uh, go with P uh, Pitt on the money line. Let's go. That was my small. That was my small. Dog. I thought that was a a, a seal, a baby seal for you, you snorkeling. Shot. That's what a pan. That's what a panther in Pittsburgh sounds like. <laughs> All right, hey, next time we talk to you guys, we'll be live from Las Vegas at the uh, Blue Wire Studios at the Win. What time are we kicking off, Ryan? All right, so uh, we will be live sometime around six, six-ish. We'll call it on Monday, six-ish Pacific. Yes, six-ish Pacific. Given all the against the spread picks for Thursday's games in the tournament, then part two on Tuesday. Uh, giving out all the ATS picks for Friday. Make sure you get in the DGen dance. And our uh, first half bingos. Those are going to be super fun. You can win some gift cards, win some cash. Cut that rug. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. And of course, make sure you smash that subscribe button for the Sports Gambling Podcast. I'm Sean, second the Woody Green. He is Ryan. First half unders, baby. Kramer, let it ride.